Alright YouTubes, I'm back at the Glycol Chiller. We got the new pump. I'm gonna get rid of this old pump. Install the new pump. But to follow up on that flow switch, remember these were running uh, without the pump. The pump, the old pump was cavitating and then it was noisy. But the refrigeration units were running and iced up the uh, heat exchangers. So we'll go over this real quick. So half of the flow switch gets hot right here off this transformer. We're going 480 to 208. And we're taking the supply to the flow switch. When the pump kicks on, this flow switch will make, and then it's gonna heat up the top of this auxiliary contact. So that's this purple wire here gets hot goes out to our flow switch when the pump's circulating that flow switch makes and it comes back on this purple wire and it heats up these auxiliaries these three gray wires go to our our low pressure control and then to the high pressure and then up to half of the coils for the compressors so if we ever lose flow on our pump the flow switch opens kink right we lose power right here, and then we're no longer heating up our, our low pressure to high pressure controls. And these contactors should drop out. Kink, kink, kink. So I wanted to see if that flow switch was stuck open. So I, I got the leg that goes up to the transformer, which is his feeder leg right here. And then the leg coming back from the flow switch, which goes to the dry set of contacts on the contactor, that's this auxiliary set here. And we're made with no flow. So I got a bad flow switch. Now I might be able to take it out and knock it around and get it to, to come around. It might just be easier to replace it, but that flow switch is bad. And it just threads right into the pipe. We can take a, we can take this off of there and unthread it. These are pretty stripped out, so I really don't want to booger with these. I'd rather just take this off up here, unthread it, and there's a paddle in there, and it's just a paddle that goes like this with the flow. And it's either cacked up or it's it's failed. And we had saw that on our first visit out here. Now I'm gonna to get to replacing this pump out, and we'll carry on. All right, upon further review, I got the cover off. You can see it's just corroded and hammer time in there. And we might be able to clean it up and get it back to life. new pump in I need to check my rotation and then we can check everything look who's back in action I glued that son of a gun and fixed it so far it's holding tough she's back oh yeah she's alive
buddy. I got most of it sorted out. Uh, I got the process. I get the process going. Had to refill this because it sucked all the the fluid out for the process. We got the glycol and a transfer pump and got it all filled back up. When it does get to set point, the circ pump will turn off. I do have to replace that flow switch. It's a little goofy. FSE-W. I got it all sorted out. So when you turn the circ pump off, it kills the liquid line solenoid valves, the refrigeration pumps down, and the circ pump is on an off delay timer. And it's gonna keep circulating. I'm trying to figure out how long that's for. Might be a five, five minute circ timer. So I'm just gonna let it time out till it turns off. Then I wanna turn it back on and check my flow switch again. I'm pretty sure the flow switch is, uh, it's not making. It's hurting. Okay, I got my meter on volts. So if the switch is made and you're reading across a set of contacts, you'll get zero volts. Pump's running, I got zero volts. When the pump cycles off, that switch should open and we should read 250 volts across there. That's what we got on one leg because it's coming off the 480. Remember, it comes off half of that transformer of the 480 is how this one's wired. That's how it was on the schematic. All right, pump is off. I'm actually reading 90 volts through the switch. My bad. Let's see if I'm getting a good grip on there. Come there, everybody. And 90 volts. Let's turn the pump on and see if it makes. Okay. 